Icarus Yacht Company of High Point, North Carolina. Here come four Hatteras, two 41s, and two 34-footers. They're southbound down the Intracoastal Waterway in Fort Lauderdale. And as time goes by, you will be seeing more and more of these fine boats. This flame-colored hull is a Hatteras 34, powered with twin 280-horsepower Chrysler engines. Next is a Hatteras 41, powered with the same engine. Now comes a Hatteras 34-footer, powered with two 210-horsepower Chrysler engines. And finally, a diesel-powered Hatteras 41, powered with two GM 6V53 engines. Now as these boats proceed to their slips, you will observe how easy and simple it is to maneuver and dock a Hatteras. This Hatteras has topside controls only. Controls are also available installed in the main cabin. Notice how maneuverable, how easy this 34 is to dock, to maneuver right to the exact position that the captain wants. With its single lever controls, the skipper can lay it smoothly alongside a piling without bumping because of the excellent visibility from the flying bridge and the easy working control. Now the same applies to the Hatteras 41. As the skipper docks, he will turn around and back the 41 into the slip, reaching for his clutch controls, which fall naturally at arm's width. He only has to use his clutches now. Notice how the skipper can back smoothly into the slip and yet hold off from the piling. Now you too can do this with a Hatteras with very little experience or practice. Hatteras controls operate so easily and smoothly, they make an amateur act and look like a professional skipper. As the skipper comes out to help the ladies aboard, you will notice that they step right onto the covering board. All decks on the Hatteras line have a non-skid surface molded in, making them safe and easy for the crew and passengers to walk on the decks without fear of slipping or falling. There's a storage locker under the covering boards. It's ideal for storage of fishing tackle, fenders, and miscellaneous gear. Now in the cockpit, we're standing over the fuel tank compartment. All Hatteras yachts have fiberglass reinforced fuel tanks, and they are Coast Guard approved. This means no leaks, rust, rot, or galvanic action to clog your fuel line. The Hatteras 41 has a 300-gallon fuel capacity, and the 34 has a 200-gallon capacity. Now let's go up onto the flying bridge and take a close look at this beautiful functional control area on the Hatteras 41. Notice as the ladies climb, they go through a hatch which offers complete security and safety in climbing this ladder, even in the roughest seas. On the Hatteras bridges, there are molded-in lounge seats, unlike any other bridge produced today. It's ideal for an afternoon siesta, for leisure cruising, or perhaps a topside cocktail party. All of the hardware on the Hatteras is of the finest quality. It is made especially for Hatteras to their rigid specifications and demands. Under the flying bridge is tremendous storage area. This is reached through a center hatch. Additional hatches may be added under the seats. The switches are under the overhang, making them less subject to moisture and the elements of the weather. The instrument panel and controls are ideally placed. The controls are by Morse. The instrument panel is a Stuart Warner. The Corsair Compass is standard equipment on the 41. Now let's look at the interior of the Hatteras and see its perfect design and beautiful workmanship. Notice the aft bulkhead that enclosed the pilot house, 
and the easy working sliding doors, the beautiful and airy lounge, and the watertight windows and luxurious interior. The molded fiberglass chairs are in keeping with the Hatteras. Beautiful curtains are standard equipment. This table is both a dining table and a coffee table. As a dining table, it will seat six comfortably. It will open up or fold down as a coffee table. It's all in keeping with the very finest of decor style. The lounge is over six feet three inches long. It has thick polyfoam cushions which are available covered with the finest of decorator fabrics. The lounge also converts into an upper and lower berth. Also, the lower berth will fold against the side bulkhead, giving easy access to the engine room. On this Hatteras is shown a diesel installation. Note that the installation is clean and neat. There is more than ample crawl-around room and access room to all parts of the engine, even on the outboard side. On a gasoline installation, there's even more room available than shown with this diesel. The Hatteras's are better equipped with more standard equipment than any boat offered on the market today. We invite you to invest and ask your dealer to show you this long list of standard equipment. The Hatteras Lower Control is a molded fiberglass unit in keeping with our modern style. This is a radio bar and molded chart desk. Notice how long and airy the main pilot house is. Remember that the lounge makes up into an upper and lower berth creating a third stateroom at night. The vinyl cork tile deck, wood paneling, large watertight windows, draperies, all add up to real comfort afloat. The galley of the 41 Hatteras is larger than most apartment dwellers' kitchens, with electric stove and over 10 cubic foot electric refrigerator, hot and cold running water, and ample storage space. Notice the tailored compartments for dishes and glasses. Below the sink and work surface, there is more storage space in drawers and cabinets than in many of today's modern homes. The master stateroom is equipped with polyfoam mattresses with zippered covers for easy cleaning. Under the upper bunk, there are eight large drawers for storage with additional storage under the lower bunk. There is also a large hanging locker immediately to the right of this view. Room for many suits and dresses. Directly connecting to the master stateroom is a fully equipped head, including hot and cold running water, lavatory, full-length shower, and toilet. Notice the size of the shower. There's no stooping or squeezing, even for a large man. A second door leads from this head into the main passageway, thus making it accessible even when the master stateroom is occupied. Now this is the bow cabin and can be entered either by doorway from the main passageway or from the overhead hatch. Thus it can be used as a second stateroom or as cruise quarters. It's equipped with two six foot four inch bunks with polyfoam mattresses. Here too there is tremendous storage space available under the bunk. A wash basin is available located around the corner immediately to the left of this view. And a toilet can be located under the seat you see here between the V berths. Forward of this cabin is the rope locker. Now let's take this beautiful Hatteras 41 to sea. Here in Fort Lauderdale, we will proceed down the intracoastal waterway to Port Everglades and run out through the ship's channel to the ocean. The Hatteras 41 is diesel powered, cruising 2,500 RPM at a speed of about 24 miles per hour. Notice this beautiful low wake throwing out and away from the boat. Even in crossing the wake of another boat, which is normally a very tricky process, the 41 is dry, and there's no tendency to veer off. Now let's cross another wake. Notice this again. Now 
Now this is a picture which dramatizes the speed of the Hatteras 41. For a large 41-foot boat with diesel power, it is one of the fastest and finest boats on the market today. And again, crossing another way. Now, watch the Hatteras when lying to in a beam sea. She is absolutely stable, does not rock or roll. Again, one of the fine design features Mr. Hargrave incorporated in the 41. Notice the flying bridge, our conversational corner. No longer is an owner a slave to his guests when he's below running his boat while his guests are in the cockpit enjoying the great outdoors and sun. Here on the Hatteras, his guests join him on the bridge in complete comfort. Now let's go through some more maneuvers with the Hatteras. She is highly maneuverable, even in tight turns, turning almost level, making her very comfortable in any sea condition. This is real performance, especially considering this one is powered by diesels. Notice the exhaust. They are placed outboard on a Hatteras, throwing exhaust steam away from the cockpit out into the slipstream. A Hatteras is completely safe with its five watertight compartments, which can be sealed off or left open for drainage of rain or wash down water. Now that we've seen the 41 in action, Let's go back to our docks in Fort Lauderdale and take a closer look at the beautiful roomy 34 Hatteras. The 34 cleats are mounted under the covering board. This eliminates skinned ankles and gouged shins and gives a better bearing surface. Also, the 34, like the 41, has a molded in, non-skid deck for real safety. The dinette of the Hatteras 34 has ample room for four people to dine in comfort, play cards, write letters, or just plain visit. You will notice that there is additional storage space under the dinette seat. There are several models of the 34. The one shown here has enclosed cabin and sliding doors, similar to the 41 we were just on. Also available is a semi-open model where the cabin opens directly into the rear cockpit. The lounge is of polyfoam and makes up into an upper and lower bunk. There is also a convenient arrangement for raising the lower bunk for easy access to the engine. The 34 galley is unique for its size. Shown here is an all-electric galley complete with refrigerator, range, and ample storage space. Notice the racks for glasses, below which are sliding door compartments for storage of dishes and food. Also, ample drawer and cabinet storage space below the range and sink. On the current models being built since this picture was taken, a new stove is being used which allows considerably more working service. This bow storeroom also has an overhead hatch for entrance from the front deck. Forward is the rope locker. The mattresses are polyfoam and beneath the bunks there are large storage drawers. The 34 has a completely equipped head. Here you're looking at the hanging locker, which can hold many suits and dresses. Wash basin, mirror, shaver outlet, and toilet are, of course, standard equipment. Under the wash basin is a large towel storage cabinet. Also available as optional equipment is a shower which has a fiberglass catch basin recessed into the deck. Now, as we go to the flying bridge, notice how easy and safe it is to climb the ladder. The hand grips are properly placed for complete comfort and easy reach. Again, the Hatteras 34 follows Mr. Hargrave's thoughts for a comfortable, conventional lounge area. The 34 bridge is similar to the 41 and offers ample lounge and loafing room. On this Hatteras 34, 
you will notice the switches are again placed below the turn of the reveal to keep them away from being exposed to the elements of the weather. This boat has Morse single lever controls and again the Stuart Warner master panel. Storage area is located below the control column. Now let's take this little beauty out to sea. We're once again going to run out Port Everglades shipping channel. Notice how this Hatteras 34 following the wake of a Hatteras 41 performs so easily and smoothly, throwing a low, flat wake. Watch it now as we cross the wake of the 41. Here the 34 is running at below cruising speed. Now the power has been added and look at it go, reaching out far beyond. Fast, very fast. Let's do that again. Here we go. Crosses the wake like a little dream and reacts as fast as a little ski or speedboat. Notice the bow wake. Let's maneuver this 34 and see how she does in tight turns. In turns, the 34 leans into the turn just enough to make it comfortable and highly maneuverable. She is very dry, has no tendency to pound, and is fantastic in the following sea, even in the most treacherous inlets. These boats were designed to be used off Cape Hatteras. Now let's look at the 34 bridge while the boat sits in a beam seat. Again, it's a conversational corner for the owner and his guests. Ideal for sunbathers or an afternoon cocktail party. And of course, the bridge is easily reached by the ladder. From this three-quarter stern view, you can have a good look at that bow wake that is is thrown away from the boat and also the flat wake as it is thrown from the transom. This is a good slow motion shot showing the bow wake being thrown in a low flat arc out away from the boat. It is dry and soft. Now, back to normal camera speed. Let's cross the wake of the 41 again and notice how dry and how soft the 34 is. Not a drop of water on her deck. All of the water has been thrown out and away from the boat. Maneuverable, fast, comfortable riding, and a luxurious interior. This is the stern wake at 1500 RPM. We advance the throttle to cruising and see how quickly the Hatteras 34 accelerates and notice how low the wake is. This is a view from the flying bridge of the 34 showing how soft it runs in a head sea. We're now going to join the 41 and run down to Baker's Hallover, a treacherous narrow inlet usually chopped up by running tides and crosswinds. In this narrow, jettied inlet, notice that the Hatterases perform like beautiful ladies. You will see that there is no tendency to pound, and very dry. Now, let's watch these two boats running in and out of the haulover inlet for a few moments. Study them. The speed of both boats is tremendous, and the big one here is diesel powered. You will find 
that a Hatteras performs perfectly and is superior to other boats in a chop or a swell in any sea, river, or lake. They were designed to be used in the treacherous waters off Cape Hatteras, North Carolina, the graveyard of the Atlantic. Yes, Cape Hatteras is the testing ground for all Hatteras yachts. Notice in this bow view, even running into a five-foot sea, no water or spray breaks over the bow. you out there and bring you back in complete safety. 